You know, I swear to God, the Mega Drive 2 is just too damn big. I mean, look at all the space it's taken up on my shelves. Uh, I wish it was smaller. Ow! What the... What's this? Ah, it's the Mega Drive Mini 2. Damn, that is tiny. I mean, just the box alone is smaller than the original Mega Drive 2. So, hello fellow gamers, and let's see what this is like. Yep, Sega's at it again. Not content with the success of their first Mega Drive Mini, and perhaps to a chorus of, oh, the second one looks better, or whatever your Japanese equivalent might be, they decided to give it another shot. But other than releasing what we've all been asking for, a Saturn Mini, how does Sega follow up a mini system that featured classic games like Sonic 2, Altered Beast, and Golden Axe? Well, how about doing what's already been done once before by the PlayStation Classic? include some CD games in there. Amongst the 61 titles included in the Mega Drive Mini 2, 12 of them are from the Mega CD add-on, and they even included some games and arcade ports that we've never had before. This makes for a rather eclectic collection, all bundled into one. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this thing. In this tiny little box, we have the Mega Drive Mini 2 itself. We have a single six button control pad, not like the last one where we got two controllers, a micro USB power cable, and a HDMI cable. On closer inspection of the Mega Drive Mini 2 itself, it's a damn close recreation and miniaturization of the original Mega Drive 2. About one quarter the size of the real thing. And like the Mega Drive Mini that came before it, it comes with similar pointless but otherwise appreciated levels of detail such as a working cartridge slot cover and removable side panel, which would ordinarily reveal an expansion port for the Mega CD. Now, I say it's damn close, because there are a couple of omissions on here, which is an indicator that the release of this outside of Japan was a clear afterthought. That power button? Well, it isn't a button at all. It's a switch, and there's no power light indicator either. Now, if you're having to ask yourself, what's the problem with that? Remember that both are features of the Japanese Mega Drive 2, but not on the Mark II models released outside the region. Now onto the control pad, and I'm really happy to see that a six button controller was included in the box. There's only one mind, so you'd have to source a second one from elsewhere for two player gaming, but Retrobit makes them officially licensed ones, and I hear they're pretty good. You could also resort to the controllers that came with the first Mega Drive Mini if you're both playing a game that doesn't really need a six button controller and you can even use one from the Astro City Mini. They'll all work fine. All things said and done, the included controller is the perfect accompaniment for recreating that classic Mega Drive 2 experience, but it does have one drawback. The homing bumps found on the B and Y buttons are, well, there's no getting around it. They're really bloody sharp. When I was trying out all the games on here, there was only one thing that I noticed more than the sharp bumps in the buttons, and that was the blisters that were developing on my thumb. I don't know what Sega were thinking with this, because I remember the original six button controller was never that sharp. Getting to the rest of it, there is a power cable, but no USB plug adapter for the mains. But you know what? That's fine, because it saves on e-waste, and well, everyone's got a USB port free to power one of these things these days anyway. But on the flip side, it's always appreciated when a HDMI cable is included in the box. That means we can start setting up this bad boy right away. Now once everything's set up and powered on, you're greeted with the menu screen not dissimilar to the previous Mega Drive Mini. All of the available games are shown with their related localised box art. You know, where possible of course, as a few of these games never even made it to the UK. And these can be ordered in different ways, so alphabetically, release date, number of players, you name it. If you prefer, you can switch over to the spine view instead, as if they were all on a bookshelf. Now the box art may be there, but the manuals certainly aren't. You're going to have to scan a QR code with your phone if you want to see those. I suppose this does give you the advantage of being able to read them whilst playing the games, but as it's an online resource, who knows how long these are going to be available. If you've got one of these, you're best downloading them as soon as possible, just be on the safe side. 
You're able to change the language used if English isn't your native tongue, and there's even an added bonus when you switch over to Japanese. With that, the whole theme of the interface changes. You get the Japanese box art, and you get their versions of these games as well. Besides the language, some of these games differ quite a bit from their Western counterparts, so they're worth checking out whenever you get a chance. Switching back to English, and you'll find that there's a brief synopsis for each of these games. Now that's handy if you've never played some of these titles before, but it's plain to see that these were written mainly with the US market in mind. I mean, Sega went through the trouble of sourcing the right box art for the UK games, so would it have killed them to write these up properly? When it comes to configuration, there's a number of settings you can change, many of which we've all become accustomed to from other micro consoles. The game display can be changed to fill your screen, or you can choose to show the games at their native 4 to 3 aspect ratio. You know, like a normal person. There's also a CRT effect you can apply if you're into that sort of thing, though it does have the downside of making everything on screen considerably darker. That one's really going to be down to personal preference. And the same goes for the wallpapers. There's a number of funky images to choose from here, but my go-to option is, of course, nothing at all. This next setting was a surprise though. You now have the option to emulate either the Mega Drive 2 sound chip or the one from the original Mega Drive. Now a lot of people prefer the first one, so including this is a damn good move from Sega. Which one do you prefer? Let everyone know in the comments. This last setting here relates to the behaviour of the mode button on the controller. You can use that to get out of your game and access the save states for the title. If you're prone to pressing it accidentally, you can add a delay or even disable it entirely. A handy feature if you don't want to get off your ass to press the reset button on the console itself. Anyway, enough of all the boring stuff, what games are included? The Mega Drive Mini 2 has a staggering 61 games built in. Yes, I know it says 60 games on the box, but I'll clarify in a moment. It includes a number of Mega Drive and Mega CD games, some of which never even reached our shores. So this is a neat way to officially experience some of those PAL evasive titles for the very first time. There's also some games that never saw the light of day anywhere, as well as a couple of fresh arcade parts. Now, I'm not going to sit here and run through every single game included because, well, everyone's tastes are different. Games I don't like will be awesome titles for someone else. I can at least list them all right here so you can see what's included. And then trigger everyone by crossing out the games I thought sucked. Though I will briefly talk about a handful of them because they do deserve a mention. Sega's at least done some of their homework properly with Sonic 3D Flicky's Island giving us in the UK the proper game ROM for this isometric collectathon. It's just a shame now though that we can't just nudge the cartridge anymore to bring up the level select screen. Ah, uh, those were the days. There was a welcome surprise in the form of a title included on the Mega Drive Mini 2 that we never got over here before. What I previously thought was just a Northwestern ITB franchisee, Granada is a top-down shooter that's jolly good fun. I spent longer than expected trying this one out. As someone who doesn't play RPG games all that much, you know, outside of Pokemon, I was very impressed with how approachable Shining Force 2 and Shining Force CD were. The graphics are nice, the story is told really well, and it didn't take long at all to grasp the battling mechanics. Not to mention, the latter of these two games is currently close to 200 quid second hand, so playing on a Mega Drive Mini 2 at around 100 quid makes it a bargain just for this game alone. Sonic CD is one of only a couple of games that have both the EU and US versions included. In a shocking twist, I have to admit, I prefer the US version, purely because of the music. It's also worth mentioning that these really are the Mega CD originals, rather than the version included in the Sonic Gems collection. That one had a far better version of its iconic cutscene. There's also M2's remake of Space Harrier 2. They've attempted to improve it by adding smoother sprite scaling, revised sound, and jacking up the speed, so it was a lot closer to the arcade original. Now, although the effort is appreciated, it causes the game to become a seizure-inducing flickery mess. It's the same with their arcade part of the first space area that they've also squeezed onto the Mega Drive Mini 2. What was initially a nice surprise in the form of a hidden game turned out to be a poor effort that we wouldn't have even missed if they didn't even bother putting it in there. 
So yeah, although there are some gems to find on the Mega Drive Mini 2, as far as I'm concerned, about half the games were a bit meh. It seems Sega has forgotten the old adage, it is quality rather than quantity that matters. Now, regardless of whether a game is rubbish or not, for the most part, they all play, well, generally, really well. Well, except for the Space Harriers, of course. You'll undoubtedly have countless hours of fun playing through the titles on the Mega Drive Mini 2. That's not to say it's all sunshine and rainbows, though. The most noticeable problem with the Mega Drive Mini 2 is the audio lag. There's a clear delay between an action taking place on screen and its accompanying sound being played. If you haven't played a Mega Drive game in a long time, chances are you probably won't even notice. But as someone who has a Mega Drive 2 setup and uses it regularly, I found it quite distracting. There's also the occasional hiccup with FMV in Mega CD games, which you will see given that almost every single Mega CD title utilises FMV in some form or another. The easiest title to see this with is Night Trap, which is pretty much all FMV. I found the video often stutters and skips during each of the scenes. Oh, no, 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 not that one. The other one. What's this? Visit to the Augers tonight. A delivery, actually. I am sure you and the boys can take care of everything here. Thankfully, it's not to the point where the games are unplayable, but it's really noticeable when it happens. The last problem I have with this is the game selection itself. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is better value for us in the UK, and by extension the rest of Europe, than in any other region, as there's some games in the list that never came out here. Not to mention games included that have never seen the light of day anywhere. But most of the exclusive titles on here are... Well, let's face it, they're a bit crap. Devian Pie is a confusing mess, Spatter is an uninspired Pac-Man clone, Star Mobile is a boring puzzle game, Super Locomotive doesn't make any sense, Versus Puyo Puyo Sun is only of interest for the second player, on a system that comes with only one controller, and quite a lot of the rest of the selection are rather on the rubbish side as well. Outrunners, Bonanza Brothers, Populous? Now surely Sega, of all people, could have pushed just a little bit more for games like, oh, I don't know, Sonic 3, for example? I mean, yes, I know there is controversy surrounding this game, but fans will have appreciated this more than filling up half of this with bottom-of-the-barrel titles. Ordinarily, with a micro console, it comes with 20 to 30 really good examples of games from the platform of which it's imitating. The Mega Drive Mini 2? Well, it's definitely a micro console that falls within this definition. It just has another 30 crummy games included as well. So, with all of its flaws, is it even worth considering? Well, to be honest, and despite my nitpicking, absolutely it is, especially if you're into your classic Mega Drive games. Ristar is an excellent platformer that totally lives up to its hype from back in 1994. Vectorman 2 is a game we never got in the UK, and it's just as much fun as the first one. Salil is a nice action RPG that has a whole link to the past kind of vibe to it. Night Striker is an excellent Japanese exclusive that's a cross between Space Harrier and Outrun and Sega's only SVP game is represented here too. Oh, and let's not forget those two great Shining Force games as well. Given how a real Mega Drive 2 and Mega CD 2 will set you back over 200 quid on the second-hand market, picking up one of these brand new for half of that price is a tantalising prospect. Even if you only enjoy one Mega CD game on this, or a very small handful of Mega Drive games, it will be worth grabbing for sure. And it's likely the modding scene will open this up in the future, so you could add more of your games on here. Keep your eyes peeled for when that happens. But what about you? Did you get the Mega Drive Mini 2? What are your favourite games featured on this? Let everyone know down below in the comments. And while you're down there, a like is always appreciated if you enjoyed the video, and there's always that subscribe button if you want to hear more from me. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.